Hi, I'm Drew Black, and you are watching PBS. So today, what are we going to be doing on today's episode? Well, something quite spectacular. We are going to be interviewing one of the most sought-after, most magnificent beer connoisseurs in all of this world, and his name is George Sibor. He is quite the mythical beast. If you watched our episode about uh, three weeks ago, our third episode in, we talked about mythical animals. He is a fucking unicorn of greatness when it comes to beer. When he flies, it is like a stream of rainbows and pixie dust. His knowledge is like utopia. It is great. And we thank him for that. But we're going to be reviewing eight beers today with the George Sablanca. The fucking George Sablanca. You might have seen me from my other interviews uh, with Betty White, Weird Al Yankovic, Tom Cruise when he became Scientologist, and pre-Scientologist when he was still cat. But yes, I'm pretty famous. So once again, my name is Drew Blank, and we will be interviewing George Sablanca in his dustbin book. And that is the news. If at any moment during the TV show that you feel sick, don't worry about it. Be a man. Drink some more. If you drink more, that throat up feeling will go away. Alright? Trust me. I know. Anyways. Yes. Let's get into the beer. The thing that we've been waiting for. Right here. We got a, a beer from Khaleesi. Um, it's pretty great right here. Um, actually, I lied. I don't know anything about this beer. But we're going to dive into the depths of its, its flavor and aromas. So this is six point. 0% ABV. If you don't know what ABV is, go... Actually, no. Go look it up on the internet. It means uh, alcohol by volume. Um, so, when you go to order a beer, and you see the alcohol percentage on there, that's the ABV. So, 6% uh, per volume. So, get some knowledge dropped on you. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of that. Maybe some teabagging of knowledge. Who knows? Depends on uh, how freaky you are. I haven't really had a lot of beers from Italy yet. Um, this is kind of, you know, one of the... This will be my fourth beer from Italy. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see how it goes, right? Let's pop her open. This beer does look kind of like a, a dwarf midget Chardonnay bottle. Italians, they drink too much. Anyways, let's pour this in, see what we get. All right, so we definitely... <laughs> Wow, it's our first. Um, some massive, massive chunks of yeast floating around in there. Um, I don't know if you can see this here. There we go, can you see that? This reminds me, opening this beer reminds me of opening up a champagne. It is so carbonated, it is ridiculous. So, the head on this beer, it's pretty lacy. You get a very CO2 kind of aroma from there. Um, this beer is literally like, a fucking geyser. Anyways, but yes, let's see how it tastes. Tastes like shit. Wow. Okay. Basically, alright, this is what I had. Um, when you put your nose up to a glass, you get tons of fucking CO2. You're like, hey, you wanna do whippets? Fuck yeah. Just pour this beer into a glass and drink it. You'll pass out. Whip it done. Whip it good. Um, but, yes. This beer's taste is just god awful. The yeast is like all up in your mouth. You're getting those chunks. It's kind of disgusting and off-putting. Tons of carbon dioxide just carrying that flavor like way over and beyond anywhere in your mouth. You're like, what the hell's going on? It's like a sandstorm of flavor in your mouth. It's crazy. It's just not good. But as we do on Dust Beer Blog, we are going to do the chuggability of this. Judging by uh, how carbonated this beer is, have your fingers ready. I will probably be burping. I'm 
Fine. Good night. Chuck ability? Oh. Fucking beat you. I'm quick on the draw. What can I say? They call me Pistol Beat. Chuck ability? I'm gonna give that a six. Just because it's so carbonated. You go for the whole bottle. Whole shebang caboodle. You will throw up. But hey, if you're one of those classy people that like to drink uh, your Bud Light and things like that, you could probably suffer through this. Actually, you know what? It's actually one step up. But uh, yeah, let's get on to our next Italian beer. All right, so what do we have here? Well, we have some pretty, pretty lacy head. When I say lacy, I mean, what do the bubbles look like? Is it a creamy head? Are the bubbles arid? Are they big? Are they small? That all equates to if the beer is lacy or not. Um, also, one of the things is, does the head itself stick to the glass as you drink it? Also, the glass, this is kind of like a, you know, cuts in angle. Um, then you have like the two of glasses, which come out, cut in, and then come out again. Um, the reason why you have those glasses is basically for aroma. Um, so this glass right here, um, yes, it says New Belgium, whoop de doo get over it. Um, it's kind of like a, an all-around taster glass. It's it's good, but at the same time, it's you know, it's not meant for every kind of beer. So when I'm drinking these beers, I don't necessarily have the right glass. But since I'm drinking these immediately, shouldn't really affect the flavor too much. But uh, anyways, let's... so um, once again, smelled the beer. Smell like fucking pure CO2 again. Whoop de doo. Um, anyways, yeah, let's get into this. Beer's table. That's all we need. Done. Hey! What's up, fuckers? Anyways, we are on our fourth beer here. I had to switch it up a little bit. Had some really shitty beer. Um, and they're all from the same brewery. Who would I guessed, right? So, here's my consensus right now about the fucking Colossi, Colossi, whatever the fuck. That stupid Italian brewery. Um, since I'm the most the Italian, I'll speak in the Italian. Dominique Nico. Um, sorry. Let's get a sum of this brewery. Alright. Well, Italy has Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Fiat, wine, great architecture, might I add, um, amazing Renaissance era stuff. Fucking great. Um, Michelangelo, Leonardo, uh, many, many, many greats are in Italy. This brewery that we just drank, not one of them, not anything. I don't know where the fuck they went wrong. Um, they must not be really Italian because there's no passion. There is no love. There is no great, holy, crazy, um, fucking like ridiculously awesome Sistine Chapel type beer whatsoever coming from these Italian breweries. Um, and it saddens my heart because they're such a passionate group. They're just a fucking nasty ass, disgusting, cheap wine brewing company. That's what they are. I mean, like, they must... Never mind, I won't go there. We're gonna talk about the Devil's Dancer, right, Cha? I knew a dancer once. She was cold. Her heart was... was colder than the Arctic. It was ridiculous. She was a Devil's Dancer. And this beer is fittingly named The Devil's Dancer. You know why? You wanna fucking know why? I'll tell you goddamn why. Because it's at 12 fucking percent. That's why. 12 fucking percent. All right? And it's dry hopped over 27 days with 10 different freaking hop varieties. It is like a symphony of fucking hops in your goddamn mouth. You have the fucking winds, you got the strings, you got the percussions, all going up on your mouth through hops in this beer at 12%. It's a fucking symphony of flavor going on in your goddamn mouth. It's like watching goddamn fucking Beethoven 16th just exploding in your mouth. 
Done. Devil in you. You better get an exorcism after drinking this beer. That's all I gotta say. Let's pop this motherfucker open now. Yes. Right now, small bottle. That's all right. It looks innocent. It looks friendly. Whatever. Devil's dancer. Okay. Wait till you fucking drink it. You're gonna be on your ass. Who knows? Maybe a finger up your a-hole. I don't know. This beer does naughty, naughty things to you. All right. This is a triple IPA. All right. So you get a nice, smooth, slightly creamy, but in between lacy head right there. Right. When you go to smell it, you get kind of a boozy flavor from there coming out there. Um, the hops aren't really prevalent or aromatic, despite how many days this beer and how many hop varieties they used in it. Um, it comes at a uh, very nut brown kind of caramel color. Um, you do have some lace sticking to the side, which is uh, pretty nice, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, let's taste this joker. I know I hyped this motherfucker up, but uh, luckily I have a priest on hand, because as soon as I drink this beer, I might do some naughty, naughty things. Uh, hey, maybe you'll see the actual last exorcism right here after I drink this beer. Gin gin, motherfucker. Whew. That's awesome. Alright, so this beer has an awesome awesome bitterness to it. Fucking... Yep, my nipples are hard. That's how fucking bitter this beer was. That is fucking how amazing this beer is. Um, so, 12%. You get a slight sweet kind of flavor that's just letting you know, like, hey, this beer is pretty damn strong. All right, that's great. <clears throat> oh, fucking drink. Yeah, that's right, I'm telling you to drink. Do it now. I'm the boss. Anyways, so, this beer has some really awesome bitterness to it. It's not like overbearing bitterness. It's a very slight to medium bitterness. Um, it's enjoyable actually. It's great. Um, it's more towards like the East Coast kind of IPA essentially, um, or like a, a European IPA. Um, you can kind of like that sweet but very bitter flavor, you know, counteracting that sweetness with like West Coast IPAs from like California and stuff like that, you get more of like the floral, citrus, fruity flavors. Um, this you're getting like the, the sweet bitterness flavor, um, which is great, but uh, yes, I'm not gonna do the chuggability of this beer. It does not deserve to be chugged. Um, it's at 12%, so you best respect. If you don't believe in it, this beer will come back and bite you in the butt hard. Definitely, definitely drink this beer safely. It's very lethal. Very dangerous. Definitely. Devil's Dance. Well named. Alright, so here we go. We got the Grand Crew of Empro, or uh, in its native tongue, uh, Cuvée von de Kaiser Blauer. Um, has a fucking majestic horse on there, and some guy trying to get it up its rear. But uh, anyways, despite that uh, very, very, very medieval representation of this beer, um, it's pretty awesome. Um, it comes in at 11%, so uh, definitely something you want to watch out for. But uh, yeah, uh, can't wait to get into this. The cork is slightly askew, but shouldn't affect the taste whatsoever. Um, yeah, let's do this. So, make sure the glass is clear. Pour this bad boy out. This beer should not be chugged. 11%, you wanna chug it, it's your own death wish, right? But uh, let's see what the aroma gives you. Very strong aroma, I'm not gonna fucking lie to you guys, all right? Um, you definitely smell some power into this beer. You get that kind of like fruity, fruity flavor coming out there in the aroma. Um, slight smoothness to it, but you do get that boozy flavor, or that boozy smell coming in there. 
at 11% being an age for about a year, you know, it should be smooth, but you never know these days. You do get a lot of sugar kind of in that aroma. That's kind of like that boozy smell. Um, when you usually smell that boozy smell, you know, hey, this probably will be very high in alcohol. And then two, there's gonna be a fucking ton of sugar and put it into this beer. All right, so let's fucking drink this son of a gun here and uh, see how it goes. Fucking A. Aloha Mora. Hello, I want some Mora, motherfucker. That shit is delicious. That's like Voldemort's fucking nut juice. That is fucking good. It is delicious. It's dark and delicious. That's where I got Voldemort. Voldemort's dark side. Harry Potter, no. It would be like a white IPA Imperial. Uh, this shit is definitely medieval, motherfucker. Medieval, motherfucker. It is good. Fuck, you got that sugariness. You got that goddamn fruity flavor, pebbles. Like, it's like watching the Flintstones in your mouth. It is that magnificent. It is awesome. It's so good. Um, don't let that color deceive you because, all right, yes, you look at it, right? And it looks fucking dark. You're like, man, I don't know. It kind of looks dark. Yeah, go fuck yourself, all right? This shit is light as a fucking feather. Tastes delicious, slightly sugary, not too sugary. It is seriously the Grey Poupon of beer, all right? Let's be honest. Yeah. So, I got something really rare for you guys, especially if you live in the, uh, the East Coast or the West Coast. Um, in certain areas, unless you live in fucking uh, Pennsylvania, and then you get it all the fucking time, but you know, hey, not all of us live in Pennsylvania, right? So, here we have a Cigar City, yes, that's right, a Cigar City Humidor Series Imperial Stout. This beer right here was aged in a cedar barrel versus your oak aged barrel, uh, which is pretty different. Um, so you're definitely gonna give it a sweet taste. So, the Humidor Series, here we are. But uh, yeah, let's get into this beer. Oh yes, fucking sweet. Damn, smokes like a cigar too. All right, here we go. Looks like sludge. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Get that nice chocolatey, it's like bourbon brown kind of head just going up on there as you kind of dissipates really quick, but it foamed up very lightly. Kind of like a nitrogen beer almost. Oh my god, this looks magnificent. Just like, look at that like ridiculous, like tar. It just like leaves like this brown lining. Oh, let's see what this is like. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. Jesus. H. Christ, this is insane. All right, so the aroma, get some sweet ass chocolate up in there. You do get some slight alcoholic, kind of like sweet sugar kind of smells to it, um, which is pretty normal because it is a uh, imperial stout. But uh, yeah, you definitely get a slight cedar smell to it. Not prevalent though, um, it's pretty awesome. All right, here we go. watching Harry Potter fucking blow spells out of his wand into my mouth. It was ridiculous. It was that awesome. But uh, yes, <laughs> this beer is fucking something to be reckoned with. It is amazing. You definitely, like when you taste it, you get kind of like a, kind of like a coffee chocolate flavor, but it's like more cocoa-y than anything else. And then as the beer finishes, you get this like weird kind of like cedar flavor, like slight sour, but like cedar kind of like citrus flavor to it. It is ridiculous. It like lightens it up. It, it's insane. It's like not heavy on the palate. 
It is just terrific. You get a slight coffee flavor in there um, with that like cocoa kind of like powdered texture and then you get that citrus kind of sour flavor from the cedar wood. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna cheers you guys here and uh, here we go. A volte salt. That is awesome. Alrighty. You need to text this. It's like fucking cutting on your tongue. Like just fucking angels just blowing their trumpets like all up in your mouth. <laughs> shit, this is so good. This is better. This is like God's shit. God's diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you shit. It's that good.